Hey folks, this is your community manager here at Mixpanel, Jazz Broughton. I'm excited to be sharing this video with you today, walking through the Mixpanel for all framework. Yes, Mixpanel is for all. There is no reason why everyone in your organization shouldn't have access to the data that you can see in your Mixpanel project or projects. And this is gonna be a really helpful framework to help you Think of it. Think of how mixed panel data can really translate and support you in your role and your goals. So the first question that I want to ask you is going to sound really abstract, but what is your role? What is the purpose? What's the point of your role? Even for you folks who are one of several, right? So when I was a customer success manager, I was one of several customer success managers. And our collective purpose was to really drive engagement and adoption and to really help people achieve their goals with the platform. So what is the purpose of your role, right? Is it to mitigate risk? Is it to QA software, right? Is it to measure the impact or the lack of impact of a POC, right? Or a trial period? Sales folks, I'm talking to you. I really mean it when I say everyone can use it. So I want you to note down or just think of the role and purpose of your role. And from that, what is your goal? What does success look like? Does that look like weekly active users? Does that look like um, a POC or a demo trial period that converts into a paid customer? What does that actually look like? Does it look like the reduction in time from a support ticket being sent in to it being resolved? Does it look like the time of folks using your tool, right? If you're a B2B productivity tool, what is the actual goal? And if you can get that down into a succinct OKR, a focus metric, whatever language sort of works for you, but what is it that you are driving? Because once you have that, you can then start to ask questions. And this is why I say you can have an OKR framework, you can have a list of metrics. That's absolutely fine. There's no need to kind of zoom into one if you have several, because for each of them, I want you to ask some questions. It is a place for you to ask questions. And that's why, that's how I like to think about Mixpanel. So what do you need to know? What are you curious about? What remains a mystery? What remains undiscovered? What's the baseline, right? For those of you whose goal is demonstrated in a metric, you know, first 1,000 users, you know, 6,000 members retained, 200 weekly active users within an account, right? Or successful onboarding of a team, whatever that kind of looks like for you. What are the questions? What is that metric now? What do you want it to look like? Which parts of your product are folks interacting in? I really want you to get really, really curious, almost put your hat on as though you were a user researcher. And think of all the questions that you would ask your ideal customer if they were in front of you and actually translate those into data because they're not in front of you, but they kind of are in terms of your mixed panel project. Because once you get those questions, you can then go into Mixpanel to find the right report for that question. Now, I use the word right loosely. I don't want you to be afraid of clicking around inside Mixpanel. You can't break it. I promise. I promise, promise, promise. The worst thing you can do is overwrite someone else's report and you'll know whose report it is so you can apologize promptly and fix whatever you changed. But ultimately, based on your question, you'll be able to identify which report is best for this. So insights, I like to think of that report as a place for the how to, how many, how often. You can go a little bit deeper, but I'm keeping it high level for today. Funnels, user journeys, time to convert, right? That example that I shared about the time to resolve support tickets, funnels is your place for that. That time to onboarding, funnels is definitely your place for that. Then maybe you have a question around what the user journey actually is. Maybe you've got the type of platform where you go in, you can explore wide and deep and as far as you want, right? Let's think about media platforms. People get in, they register, they sign in, and they search and go wherever they want to. Flows will be your place for that. Flows is where you get to analyze the natural user journey, the journey that they've chosen to take as opposed to the one that you've designed for them. Retention, the name is kind of 
indicative of what that report does but how frequently are they coming back what combination of events are they doing what does that behavior look like what does retention look like in the first 24 hours i'm talking to you folks who are maybe in gaming where you want to see that repeat behavior right i've recently returned to commuting so i'm engaging with a couple of apps on my commute right i want to know that these companies are looking at my user behavior um, through reports like retention. And then going a little bit further into the signal report. And this can be really helpful if like, let's be honest, I'm gonna come close to the camera for this. You have no clue what you should be looking at and you want Mixpanel to help you out. It's okay. Signal is the place of inspiration. This is a place I like to go at least once a month to really put together a goal event, a cohort, right? A cohort of successful users or users who have completed their onboarding or whatever it is. And I asked Mixpanel, what did they do? What led us here? What do they have in common? What else should I be looking at? And what the signal report will do is give you not only a list of events that folks are doing, they'll also give you the cadence. So the frequency, right? They trigger this event twice within one week, right? And some of those responses, I'm gonna be honest with you, they will be events that you might have thought of already. But what's really powerful when you look at that cadence is you can lift that right? If the signal reports tells you that they sign in twice a week, every week, your most successful users, right? Whatever you define that cohort as, you can then go into cohorts, which is a report in and of itself, but it kind of lives everywhere else. Um, you can go into cohorts and say like, Mixpanel, show me the list of users who are behaving this way, because I want to group them together so I can analyze them. I want to see if they are the ones really taking that first move on any new features are they on our news li li letter right on our news list I, I mixed up news list and mailing list but you know what i mean here are they connected with us on social media what are all of those things once you have a user in a group also known as a cohort also you can describe it as a segment the only difference is we are not self-serving you right segments inside the cohorts report we want you to decide what is the composition of that group what are the most valuable behaviors that you really want to analyze and find the people who are behaving in that way one of the things that i really love to kind of think about when it comes to your data and your users engaging with your product is believing what they do not just what they say OK, so, yes, somebody may have, for instance, signed up on your top tier pricing plan, which means they get all the bells and whistles. But you and I kind of know all too well that they might not be very likely to use all of the bells and whistles. That can be a very interesting rabbit hole to go down. Right. But I digress. Let's return back to the reports. So once you have the question, you'll know what kind of report to go into. And like I said, click around and see what fits. The next thing you'll be able to do once you go into the report is to build a query. So what you see where Mixpanel will ask you for the events, maybe some filters, breakdowns, all of that good stuff. It is what we describe as the query builder. And this is really where you start to get nice and granular, right? Like grains of sand. I'm a very metaphorical person. This is where you want to know, is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it the past six weeks, right? What is the time period that you want to analyze? Which visualization do you want? Do you want a chart? Do you want a graph? Do you want a pie? Do you want a trend line? What does that look like? And then of course, level of detail or level of summary. So what I'm talking about when I say level of detail, that is where we're talking about our filters and our breakdowns, right? So if you want to segment this data by a event property or a user property or indeed by a cohort, right? So you might want to look at your weekly active users, but you might want to use the breakdowns to split that out by region, or you might want to use the filter to filter to just look at one segment of your audience or your users. So again, you can't break it, click around. And then last but not least, you will ultimately end at your answers. And this isn't necessarily the end of the journey. This is very much the beginning. Our aim is for you to get the insight that you need to use it to inform your work, right? To inform your approach. And then ultimately fulfill those goals, fulfill your purpose, right? It all connects back. We're not just asking questions for the sake of questions. I'm encouraging you here to ask questions because I want you to succeed. So. 
give it a go, answer these questions, get really curious in your data and let me know how it goes.